Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to do this uh, podcast. It's been a rough uh, day in New Brunswick with us going back to the red level, but hopefully you'll drop in today and get your mind off things. This has been uh, several requests in the making. Six or seven followers of the channel wanted me to do something on this guy, and I want to give him uh, credit in a lengthy podcast. We're doing this today. Of course, he is probably one of the most respected athletes, not only in NHL history, but in Canadian sports history, the man that broke so many barriers in relation to professionalism, uh, uh, handling the puck, shooting the puck, uh, you know, scoring, uh, playmaking. Of course, we have to be talking about the great Slovakian Canadian, Stanley Makita. Now, Stan Makita, born Stanislav Guat, May 20th, 1940, in Soko, uh, Sokoš, Slovak Republic. Uh, played for the Chicago uh, Blackhawks of the NHL and is regarded as the best centerman of the 1960s, which is saying a lot. We had some really good players in that decade. In 2017, he was named one of the 100 greatest NHL players of all time. And he was the first Slovakian-born player to win the Stanley Cup, which he did <coughs> with the Blackhawks in that golden year of 1961, where they had Bobby Hull, Stan, all the great uh, defenders and players. Now, Bikita, again, was born in Slovak Republic as Stanislav Guat and raised in a small farming community there until late 1948. But he then moved to St. Catharines, Ontario as a young boy. He was adopted by his aunt and uncle, Anna and Joe Makita, who gave uh, him their surname. Stan, who considered him Slovak, mentioned in interviews how proud he was of his Slovakian origins. Now, after three starting, starting junior seasons with the Blackhawks affiliate to St. Catherine's TPs of the OHA, he was eventually promoted to the parent Chicago Blackhawks in 1960. In his second full year, 1961, the Blackhawks won their third Stanley Cup. The young center led the entire league in goals during the playoffs with a half dozen. Now, the following season was his breakout year. He became a star center on the famed scooter line with right wing Kenny Warm and left wingers Ab McDonald and Doug Moans. Now, combining skill defense and a reputation as one of the game's best face-off men, he used his innovative curved stick to the best of his ability. He led the league in scoring four times in the decade, tying Bobby Hull's year, year-old single-season scoring mark in 67 with 97 points. This mark was broken two years later by former teammate Phyllis Bizzito, but is currently held by Wayne Gretzky. The 68 season, an 87-point effort for Makita, was the last year a Chicago player won the scoring title until Patrick Kane's 106-point campaign in 2016. In his early years, Makita was among the most penalized players in the league, but then he decided to play a cleaner game and went on to win the Lady Bing Memorial Trophy for a particular sportsmanlike conduct combined with excellence twice. Now, his drastic change of behavior came after he returned home from a road trip. His wife told him that while their daughter Meg was watching the Blackhawks' last road game on television, she turned and said, Mommy, why does Daddy spend so much time sitting down? The camera had just shown Mikita in the penalty box yet again. Now, during his playing career in 73, uh, Mikita teamed up with Chicago businessman Irv Tanabek to form the American Hearing Impaired Hockey Association, A-H-I-H-A, to bring together deaf and hard of hearing hockey players from all over the country. And he founded the Stan Mikita School for the Hearing Impaired, inspired by a friend's deaf son who was an aspiring goalie. He also helped bring the Special Olympics to Chicago, bringing his family out to volunteer at races. Internationally, he's also known for playing a big part at the Summit Series in 1972 for Team Canada against the Soviet Union. He played against the Russians twice in Canada, as well as two exhibition games during the Southern Summit Series. One against Sweden in Stockholm and one against Czechoslovakia in Prague, which is unofficially called Game 9. He also played several exhibition games for Czechoslovakia in the summer of 67 when he came to his country of origin to visit his family. Now, about the curved hockey stick. Now, Bikita and teammate Bobby Hull were a well-known forward duo in the 1960s, gaining notoriety for using sticks with curved blades. Such sticks gave a competitive advantage to shooters versus goaltenders. As a result, the NHL limited blade curvature to half an inch in 1970. Mikita reportedly began to practice after his standard stick 
got caught in a bench door, banged a blade before it hit the ice. He was soon borrowing a propane torch from team trainers to create a deliberate curve. Now, Mikita was also one of the first players to wear a helmet full-time after a December 67 game in which an air shot tore off a piece of his ears and unfortunately it was fortunately it was stitched back on. Now Mikita's later years were marred by chronic back injuries leading to his retirement during the 1980 season. At that time only Gordy Howe and Phyllis Pizzito had scored more points in the NHL and just six players had appeared in more games. He was eventually inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 83 and into the Slovak Hockey Hall of Fame in 2002. After retiring, Mikita became a golf pro at Kemper Lakes Golf Club. His other business interests, including Stan Mikita Enterprises, including making the small plastic sauce containers that accompany chicken nuggets at McDonald's. He owned Stan Mikita's Village Inn in the 1960s and 70s, located in the Oak Brook Shopping Center in Oak Brook, Illinois. Now, Mikita also brought the forward to the children's book, My Man Stan by Tim Wendell, and he's featured as a main character in the book. He eventually became a goodwill ambassador for the Blackhawks, and in the fall of 2011, he raised a statue honoring Mikita at Gate Tree and a Half at the United Center. For three decades, the Black Eyes Alumni Association has also hosted an annual golf tournament named in Stan's honor. Now, currently, Mikita ranks 14th in regular season points scored in the history of NHL, and just three other players, Stevie Eisenman, Alec Delvecchio, and Nicholas Lindstrom, have appeared in more games while playing for only one team over their careers. Makita also made a cameo role in the film was Wayne's World, which featured a Stan Makita donut shop spoofing the Canadian donut chain Tim Hortons, which of course was co-founded by Hockey Hall of Fame member and uh, former Makita opponent Tim Horton. As a restaurant named Stan Makita's and closely resembles the movie's version, opened in 1994 at the Virginia Amusement Park King's Dominion, and at Paramount Carowinds in Charlotte. Unfortunately, on May 24, 2011, Mikita was diagnosed with oral cancer and became, began external beam radiation therapy. On January 30, 2015, the Chicago Tribune released this statement from his wife. Stan has been diagnosed with suspected Louis Bau de body dementia, a progressive disease, and was under the care of compassionate and understanding caregivers. In June 2015, it was stated that Makita had no memory of his former, former life and was being cared for by his wife, Jill. Makita unfortunately died at the age of 78 on August 7, 2018. He was survived by his wife, four children, and nine grandchildren. Now, on September 14, 2019, as reported by the Boston University CTE Center, that upon performing a posthumous study of Makita's brain, it was found that he suffered from stage 3 chronic traumatic encephalophobia, or CTE, at the time of his death. This marked Makita as the first Hall of Famer to ever been diagnosed with the disease, which was related to concussion and injury syndromes. Now, what a what a what a total, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk about uh, the man could score goals like uh, and points like uh, like you wouldn't believe. Between 1962 and 1975, he passed a 20 goal mark in consecutive years: 21, 31, 39, 28, 30, 35, 40, 30, 39, 24, 26, 27, 30, and 36. Tremendous, tremendous numbers. Again, uh, 1,394 regular season games, 1,467 in points, 541 goals, 926 assists. But the playoff numbers are tremendous as well, ladies and gentlemen. He played for Chicago in the playoffs uh, every year except four over two decades. 155 games, 150 points, 59 goals, 91 assists. Now, his early career, again, a lot of penalty minutes. He had a high of uh, 154 and 85. But within 10 years, he was down to uh, 12 minutes. So the Lady Bing was well-deserved. Now, uh, Stanley Cup champion in 61. And just a look at the 61 year, 53 points in a regular season, 11 points in the playoffs. Now, awards and accomplishments. Pretty deep. Let's go over them. 14 all-time in points, 18 assists, 31st in goals, 40 in games played. Hart Memorial Trophy winner, 67-68. Art Ross leading scorer. 64, 65, 67, 68. Lady Bing Trophy, 
67, 68. Stanley Cup, 61. First All-Star Team, 62, 63, 64, 66, 67, 69. Second All-Star Team, 65 and 70. All-Star Game, 64, 67, 68, 69, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75. Lester Patrick in 76. Only player in initial history, Wendy Hart, Art Ross, and Lady Bing in the same season. Doing so in consecutive seasons in 67 and 68. Um, injury plagued Summit Series, but played uh, f- uh, four games total in, in, the, play, in the, uh, the Summit and the Exhibition Series. Uh, 98 ranked number 17 on a Hockey News list of the 100 greatest players. Uh, number was retired by the Blackhawks October 9, 1980. Uh, number 21 was the first number to have his jersey retired by the Blackhawks. Hockey Hall of Fame 83, Slovak Hockey Hall of Fame 2002, uh, Ruschenbach, Slovakia, there's a rink named after him, and again 2011, statues of McKean and Bobby Hall were installed around outside the United Center, and again the first player of Slovak origin who won the Stanley Cup. Now, uh, the, the, the most I remember about Stan McKean growing up is that he would always lose to Montreal in the playoffs, but a team that had Mikita and Hull, they were always one or two players away from beating Montreal. But when he played with the Summit Series in 72, Frank and Peter and Serge and Guy and Kenny and Cornway said publicly in French and on some English print, said it'd be, it's finally great to play with Mikita. So one of the biggest draws for the people at the Summit, Stan Mikita, who was an honored opponent for a lot of the original six teams and the expansion 12, when Mikita lined up, and the fact was, if you know your history, Czechoslovakia has been was a puppet state of the Russians for many years until true hockey and other means they finally gained their independence. So the Czech and Slovak Republic have gone on to great uh, hockey success uh, over the years, and is due to Stan Mikita. As important as the Stashnys and Jagger are, uh, Mikita is just as important for the Czech and Slovak nations. A hero in every shape or form. My only regret, I never had a chance to meet him. Very handsome guy, very genial, and but to lose, for him to lose his memory of all his accomplishments, it's kind of cruel, but you know what, hockey, the ice is hard, the boards are hard, the puck is hard, and like life, nobody gets out alive, ladies and gentlemen. So that's the uh, the the stellar career of Stan Mikita. If you like what we're dis- doing here, give us a like comment or subscribe to Chicago Blackhawk fans out there. There's many other podcasts in our channel. Please check us out in the search engine and hopefully we'll be pleased with the efforts we're doing here. Have a good day. Bye.